would ever own, uh, and then outfit those homes, or having Lennox Lewis cut up public service announcement that said real men don't hit women, um, that ultimately wasn't the size of the contracts, the fact we did all the record-breaking contracts, but it was <clears throat> whatever we'd enhance the player's life with that enabled him to have a, a happy life after sports and making a difference in the world. Wow. Lee, you've had um, plenty of successes in, in adversity. Tell my audience how you've overcome all the adversities and got back on track. Um, you know, as the years ran on and, and as I got towards 40 years, uh, towards the end, I ended up experiencing difficulties with alcohol. And uh, I finally got to the point where I realized that my relationships were being adversely affected, that my health was being affected, that my legacy was being affected, and back in 2010, I decided to um, put everything aside and to deal with a rehab situation where I could address the problems with uh, alcohol. Um, nobody forced me to drink. There were events like the death of my father, losing houses to mold, having children diagnosed with uh, incurable diseases. There were a variety of circumstances, and then finally divorce. But the reality of the situation was that nothing else mattered but that. And uh, at the time that was going on, I wasn't a great financial steward. Um, so now I'm 682 days um, of continuous sobriety. Congratulations. Thank you, and excited about, uh, again, making a difference in the world, but um, for anyone who's got that kind of problem, um, it's easy to get into denial and easy to continue um, working when you're not impacted, but the bottom line is it's progressive, it gets worse, and uh, without sobriety, none of the rest of it really functions. Well, Lee, I tell you what, we're all behind you because uh, I, I don't know if I ever told you, Lionel, how I ended up meeting Lee. I've known him all my life, but I never physically Man. met him. And uh, I saw him on Facebook and I befriended him and uh, started communicating that way. And then one day I said, well, let, let's, let's see if I can just get him on the show and he can tell his story. Because Lee, Lionel and I have a uh, sports and academic academy where we teach kids how to market themselves for college scholarship consideration and also success off the field. And when I read you know, your background, uh, what you're doing with uh, concussion research, what you're doing in the community, what you've done for the, all the players that I know, I said I gotta have this guy on the show to tell his side of the story. And I really do appreciate you coming on. It's been my pleasure. Well listen, we got something on the show that we call a twofer. And when we have a great interview, we like to have somebody come back. So we're extending an invitation that anytime you want to come back on the show, we want to have Lee, we want to be in the Lee Steinberg business. I would love to do it, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, Lee. Everything they need to do to get their kids a, a college scholarship consideration. You haven't seen it until you've seen it in Charter HD. Call now to add Charter HD for only $5 more a month and watch all your favorite programs in HD. Charter. Let it all in. Ah. Power of Ah. Ah. Brought to you in part by Alabama Power. Always on. Here at the Charter International Dateline facility, scientists have one foot in today and one foot literally in tomorrow to bring Charter customers the latest thing. Oh, it's Casual Friday over here. Like switching your phone service from AT&T, Verizon, or CenturyLink. Charter guarantees to cut your phone bill in half. 
Speaking of cutting things in half, where's the rest of those pants? Cooking with the Pros is brought to you by Alabama Power. Always on. Getting your, uh, your student athlete uh, scholarship consideration is a family thing. You know, it's, it's going to take a lot of marketing. And a lot of parents ask me, how do you do it? Well, in the coming weeks, we're going to take you through a step-by-step -step systematic approach of what you need to do to assist your student athlete in getting college scholarship. Now, I've got a friend of mine that I want you to listen to what he's about to say right now. That'll be a start. And then following that, week after week, we'll do a little bit more, a little bit more, until we kind of get that approach down. Take a look. That's right. And, and like we tell all our kids in Pro Start, um, a strategic approach is nothing more than a road map to success. Mm -hmm. When you're in a car driving to New York, and if you've got a road map, and you've got a map planned out, a, a, a route planned out, mm -hmm. you can get on that route and drive forever. But if you don't know where you're going, mm -hmm. you're going to stop here, you're going to stop there, and you're going to have all these different mistakes. So what I want to do now is for you and me to go through this um, scenario mm -hmm. where we teach the parents everything they need to do to get their kid a, a co college scholarship consideration. Mm -hmm. And I'll read through the freshman year and you tell me um, your thoughts on uh, what you would add to that. Okay. okay. And let me get these old glasses on here because I'm at that age where I need them. Look, they're looking good on you, though. Well, thank you, man. Uh, does Jack Schaefer, uh, Schaefer Eye Care Center. Okay. Uh, freshman year uh, of high school. We're going we're gonna to start the freshman year, and this is what you need to do. So if you need a minute to go grab a pencil or a piece of paper to write some of this stuff down, because this is all uh, one of our board members is... Um, uh, the, scholar, the director of scholarships for the University of Alabama, and she puts on this seminar for our kids every year. So this is information that's coming straight from the University of Alabama. Okay, freshman year of high school, make a four-year plan of classes you will take, including classes that will prepare you for college. Take an aptitude test through your high school. Remember that your GPA counts starting this year. Your freshman year, your GPA starts to count. Work hard to keep your GPA above a 3.0, Commit yourself to extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I both know extracurricular activities keep you out of trouble, but it also helps your resume. That's right. Keep a file or record of documents such as report cards, honor roll, civic clubs, sports recognition, so this will be easily accessible when you sit down to write your resume. And we're going to talk about a resume in a minute. At the end of the year, with Summer in Sight, review your four-year plan to see if you need any changes in the in the coming months to stay on track. Take advantage of summer academic programs in your area, jobs that interest you, summer camps, etc. What would you say to all of that? Okay, first, first bullet, make a four-year plan of classes you will take, including classes that will prepare you for college. Basically what I like to say about that is, is, is making a plan. They say people who fail, fail to plan, plan to fail. Gary, exactly. and I'm quite sure you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very crucially important that they do that. That's, that's absolutely necessary. But even more important is the fact that they, they make a plan in association with the classes that they want to take to write down what they are passionate about. And the reason why I say passionate because there's going to be, as you and I both know, in college, there's going to be a lot of... Uh, fluff, as I should say, as far as negative environment, people, places, and things that, will, that are going to be there to deter these students to get them off track. So yeah, they want to take these classes, but if they're not passionate about what it is that they want to really do in their career, because they're taking these classes to get a degree towards a, what, a career. So they need to find out what they're passionate about. So when all of that different stimuli is coming at them, all that negative stimuli, people, places, and things, students, parties, that's, once the, that's going to be there to deter them, then they know that this, is, this goes beyond college, mm -hmm. that, this, that their life is at stake. Because there, there are a lot of students going to college and losing their lives, ODing on drugs, you know, alcoholism. 
you know what I mean, the, the high levels of promiscuity on, on college campuses. There's a lot of things coming at these students these days, Gary, so they need to find out what they're passionate about because when, when they find that, then they're going to take classes that not only just deal with a degree, but they're going to take classes and take a major that's going to deal with their career and their lifelong passion. Because a lot of times they're going to have to do things that's not going to pay. Exactly. And, and you know, the internships and, and all this experience that you can gain to help you be successful on there there, because you've got a, a long time to live after mm -hmm. you get out of college. That's right. Long time to live after you get out of pros. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have that backup plan. Let's go to the sophomore year. The sophomore year, the preparation for your sophomore year, take the plan pre-ACT test. The results can be used to determine what courses you need to focus on, math, science, English, etc. During the coming year to improve your score when you take the ACT the following year. Review your goals again. That's what he just said. Your goals. You got to set the goals that you want to achieve. Review your goals again. Make sure you're on the right path to achieve them. Continue to take constructive steps to reach these goals. Grades, attendance, and leadership are all important for your future. Keep working hard. Continue to add your file folder, any new achievements and honors that you receive through the year. Stay committed to extracurricular activities. If you aren't involved, find an activity or job that, you, that will utilize your best talents and interests. Attend summer academic programs that will help you transition to college. And basically what this means is find your passion. Find something that's going to assist you in being successful by uh, getting involved in the community. What are you going to? What are you want, willing to give back in order to get what you want in the long term? What are, What are your thoughts on that? Um, out of everything that you said, the passion piece again, reiterating on that, and th this uh, bullet right here. Stay committed to extracurricular activities. Uh, if you aren't involved, find an activity or a job that will utilize your best talents and interests. Um, you know, the freshman year is, is the year where it's 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 just like in, in high school. Um, you're, 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 you're a newbie. You're coming in there and, and you're a follower. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and you, you're, you're, you want it to lead, but you don't know how. But the sophomore year, as well as the junior year, um, is the year where you're, you're beginning to put on your, your suit of identity and you're beginning to uh, find your own persona and your, your own image. And getting involved in extracurricular activities helps to, to, to put uh, a foundation to that. It helps uh, a student to, to be able to put themselves in a position where they can grow into becoming a leader by being involved in a fraternity or sorority or an organization that helps them to work on their soft skills, um, to work on their core competencies that they're going to need after college, and to just go to, to build their self-esteem to let them know that once they get out of college that they can go in front of a person for a job and, get, and, and take control of that interview and get that position. And more importantly, what the extracurricular activities allows them to do is it allows them to create more of an of a, um, a entrepreneurial and an entrepreneurial mindset to where as though that they, are, they know for sure that they can truly be an asset to a company or corporation. Well, you know, I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly. And what I would suggest to every parent out there is to, um, in addition to what we're talking about in these steps, is start to teach their kids how to communicate, mm -hmm. like you said, because you never know when you're going to meet that person that can actually turn your life around. That's right. And if you can't communicate how you can um, expand their horizon and uh, contribute to their common goal, uh, you can sit there and you can stutter, you can, you know, uh, you got to be able to say point blank in two minutes how I can help this organization, what I need um, to get to my next level and be able to communicate in that factor. That once you learn how to communicate, that's going to be with you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that, you know, you read up on communication, you practice interview skills, you get ready for life because it, 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 it if you don't, somebody else is going to take that job that you've always wanted. They're going to take that football position that you've always wanted if you're not prepared to play the sport, basketball, football, what have you. So you've got to combine those two things by being the best that you can be in your sport, but also the best that you can be off the field mm -hmm. as well.
My friend, we got something on the show that we call a twofer. Mm -hmm. When we have a great interview, we always ask them to come back. Can you come mm -hmm. back with us? For sure. Well, listen, I really appreciate you coming out today. Thank you. And I look forward to working with you in the future. I think uh, we can do some, uh, some serious help. We can add some serious things to um, these kids' future to help them out and get to where they want to be. And uh, all they got to do is listen. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, thanks for tuning into the show this week. Um, as you see, we're going to continue this series where we teach um, what we think will help you get your kid to the next level and get them college scholarship consideration. All right, Chef Leroy is going to be up. Let's see what he's cooking next. Here at the Charter International Dateline facility, scientists have one foot in today and one foot literally in tomorrow to bring Charter customers the latest thing. Oh, it's Casual Friday over here. Like switching your phone service from AT&T, Verizon, or CenturyLink, Charter guarantees to cut your phone bill in half. Speaking of cutting things in half, where's the rest of those pants? This is Isaac Curtis with the Cincinnati Bengals, former wide receiver, and you are watching Cooking with the Pros. Watching, waiting for something to amaze me. That's when it happened. You haven't seen it until you've seen it in Charter HD. Call now to add Charter HD for only $5 more a month and watch all your favorite programs in HD. Charter, let it all in. And we're back. Chef, now, this looks fantastic. Tell me what it, what, what, what's, what's all entailed here. Well, today, Gary, what I'm going to do for you is I'm showing you one of our dishes also in the Caribbean that we do. Okay. Uh, kingfish. You ever heard of kingfish? Yeah, I have. I've never had it before, so... Kingfish is king mackerel, so it, it is part of mac. It is a mackerel, mm -hmm. basically. It's the cut, and then it's cut into a steak. Mm -hmm. So for the people who don't like eating red meat, this would be a great alternative for red red meat. It's, okay, it's kingfish. So we have green banana, kingfish. That's how it's gonna look when we're done. Show you how the green banana. You ever saw a green banana before? I've got two of them sitting on my dresser at home. Now these don't turn yellow right away. They don't. No. Because it's not like a regular banana where you can eat it sweet. When they turn yellow, they look funny yellow. They're not like the banana you go on the tree and it's nice and ripe. No, these are green bananas. Okay. So they have like a little bitter taste. So they're not as sweet. Now they can turn yellow, but they're not going to be as yellow. So okay. what we do is we're going to just throw these here right in the water. In the water? Just like that. We're going to boil, boil these. To, boil bananas? Boil bananas. I'm going to add you a little salt. You learn something every day. A little salt. Next. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, you ever heard of when chefs talk about searing something? Right. You understand the concept we're, 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 we're talking about when we say sear? I don't, but, but the viewers uh, do. When we say sear, we're basically sealing in the juices into the meat. Okay. So we're going to sear the fish, and then I'm going to add the onions, the peppers, the water, the butter, and we're just going to let it be happy. Okay? Okay. Gotcha. Add a little oil because I'm going to add butter, so we don't need too much oil. Let that be happy there. Now, I already seasoned this, so I'm not going to season it anymore. Okay. I seasoned it with a little bit of garlic, thyme, oregano, mm -hmm. sazon, and adobo. Now, adobo is another go-to seasoning that we use in the Caribbean. Okay. That has a little bit of sugar. It's garlic, turmeric, and salt. So, so is the seasoning that you can't tell me what's in there, is that in there as well? Yes. So I st you still are not going to tell me what's in there? I'm not going to tell you what that seasoning okay. is. Okay. Okay. You have to shoot me if you did, huh? I don't want to shoot you now. Probably have to cut you up with knives. Okay. You know? I, I don't do guns. Okay. That's violence. Okay. We don't do violence. Okay. All right. So I, I let it sear a little bit on one side. We're going to do it on the other side for about another minute. So our bananas are boiling. Gonna cut, put in our onions now. The reason I cut the onion circular gives it a nice presentation on the plate, especially if you're presenting this to friends or families or that special someone. 
add a little butter. Just a little bit of butter. Yeah. Not too much butter, just a little bit. And we're gonna finish this off with water. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time. It boils for about 10 to 15 minutes and you have to allow it to cook. But that's the sauce that you see on the plate, the butter sauce. Mm -hmm. Now the secret to this, as it butters and cooks, in the Caribbean we love to have a little heat. What's your favorite pepper? Cayenne. Cayenne? Mm -hmm. We love either scotch bonnet or habanero. Now the habanero pepper is one of the most hot, hottest peppers in oh, the world. Oh no, okay. But you just need a little bit. You don't need too much okay. to overbear. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut. I don't even want that on my fingers. Why? It's not that bad. I've been known to stick my fingers in my eyes at some time. Now those two little pieces are enough to heat is up enough the whole to pot. give us a little bit of heat. Unbelievable. And that's our kingfish. And that's how it's gonna look when it's pretty much ready. Like I said, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to cook. So And that's that's what we got. This is the finished product. That's the finished product. And guys, uh, in the studio, this is mine, so you know right now. What do you think? I think it looks nice. What do you think? Well, I have to do the taste test. I just can't, you know, just give you. You let me know. Okay, I will. You let me know. Hey, be sure to check us out at these times every week on Cooking with the Pros. <laughs> you ate it all. I ate all the fish. <laughs> yes, I did. But here's a good thing. He'll be back next week, and I'll let you get first. Oh. This, is, this has been a great show, man. Uh, Marcel Darius, and uh, I get a chance to uh, talk uh, again about Lee Steinberg and, and the importance of having great representation, which I know Marcel does have. Man, fa uh, fantastic show today. I mean, you had Marcel telling you what to expect, you know, the guys that are coming out now, how big, impor how important flexibility and things were. You got Lee Steinberg and also Mar Marcel talking about core values and taking the initiative to do things. Now, you know, the, the representation part where you know the guy needs it, you know and I know the ghost stories of all of those things where they lose a whole lot of money. And we could share that with him. And I know you've got some experience with that. Oh, no doubt about it, man. And I've been, you know, like I said, I've been talking to this kid since he was a junior in high school. And, and it, it just warms my heart to know that he's taken a little bit of something that I've told him and applied it to his career. And, and if, he, if he continues with the teachings that he's had, he's going to be one of the great ones. Right. I On and off the field is what right. I'm saying. Well, listen, thanks for tuning in this weekend, and we look forward to seeing you next week. And um, just keep on smiling. Everything will be fine.